And one of the things is that I'm seeing with perhaps, and, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is that we need to move away from the development matters as being a um, as being a tool and actually to, to, for it to go back to becoming a document. It's something you should read and understand and, and know deeply and use to inform that curriculum. And I would love to just hear very briefly kind of your ideas on, on that first. And then secondly, on if somebody is in a very logistical sense, thinking about for the first time in the early years, because of all this conversation, developing their own curriculum, where on earth do I start? Yeah, so um, a couple of pretty big questions there, Matt. So <laughs> you've got you've got I'll, two minutes. <laughs> I'll do my I'll do I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Okay. So w w where do you start? Well, there is no single starting point. You have to keep various perspectives in mind. You have to think about the children you're working with. You have to think about the the community and the families. You need to think about the big picture of the child's learning and what's what's happening next for the child. Um, so that you're both very rooted in the moment, but also you've always got an eye for what's next for the child, what's happening next. So we help children today, but we also prepare children for tomorrow. Um, like you said, really, Development Matters sits in the background as the guidance to support practitioners. It's a good way of just checking that your curriculum is broad enough and balanced enough. Um, in terms of ambition, I would say, treat development matters as kind of the floor, not the sky. So be really ambitious for the children that you're with and believe in the capabilities and the unique talents of those young children that are coming your way. Don't think it's all just about covering what's in development matters. Um, for some children, the level of detail in development matters is, is not gonna be enough to track their progress. So for example, if I'm worried about a child's communication, uh, I'm probably going to start by looking at what's in development matters and I might look at those checkpoints and I might think, okay, I'm a little bit worried about this child. Um, so I'm going to give them a bit more time and a bit more support and I'm going to talk to their parents, give them the help they need and really keep on top of this for a few weeks, um, maybe two or three months, see if that supports the child to make the progress in their communication that I'd like to see. But if I'm then not happy with how things are going, I will turn to a document like Universally Speaking, which you can Google. It's a free um, guide to children's communication um, from the Communication Trust. And that gives me a lot more detail. So if a child may have some specific difficulties in certain areas of their communication, I need to go to that level of detail. So what's the take home message from that? Make sure you've got the right tool for the job. For most children, development matters sits there to inform your curriculum and what you do. Um, for some children, it's not detailed enough and you'll need to get more specialist help and advice or a more detailed account of the child's development in, in that area. So make sure you've got the right tool for the job that you're doing. Mm -hmm.